One of the labs we're going to do today is Mini Lab 1, and in this one we're going to take cobalt 2 chloride and dehydrate it to see the color changes that take place. So there's a couple new things we're going to use this week. We have this evaporating dish, um, we have tongs, and um, we have a scoopula as well to scoop out the chemical. So the tongs have these ridges on the inside, and they work the best if they're aimed down. So if you kind of like grab onto the side of something and pick it up, that works real well. Um, but just make sure that you do it that way. And you know, don't swing it around or anything. Just pick up what you need to pick up, put it down very carefully, let it go. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is put this on a balance, and then you wanna hit the zero button or the tear button. That'll make it go to zero. And we wanna add about one gram of hydrated cobalt two chloride. So you can open this up and you can just kind of tap it in there. It doesn't need to be exact. I'm just looking for about a gram. It's gonna be a small amount, but that's fine. It's a little much, it's okay. It says 1.07 on there, that's okay. All right, so then close this up. And uh, we wanna make sure we have gloves, you know, all of our safety stuff on today. And then we wanna take this and put it onto the hot plate. So we're just gonna take it over, move it over the hot plate, and your, turn your hot plate on. Let's turn it up to 300 and make sure you turn your fan on, make sure your fan is close to it, make sure it's venting away from other people, um, and that's, that should go. So then what you're gonna do next is you're gonna be watching for color changes. Now keep your face away from here because it could bubble up. Um, it, it's going to boil, so you wanna make sure that you don't get splashes on you, so stay back. But you can watch it, um, and like I said, it'll change a couple colors, so keep track of that. Once it's done doing its color change, I'll come over, I'll check it out, and I'll say, okay, yeah, that looks good. Then you're gonna put it on some wire gauze because it's gonna be very hot. So we'll put the wire gauze down, very carefully lift it off, put it down, and then again, stay away from it because it's gonna be very hot for a little bit. It says let it cool for three minutes, so do that, all right? Um, while that's happening, you can fill this up with water, and you'll put some water in here, you'll use this pipette, and then after the three minutes, it says, first of all, it says, did a color take, change take place while cooling? If so, describe it. And then it says, using a pipette, add a couple drops of water, only a couple drops, and watch the color change. All right, so we're gonna add a couple drops of this. It should change color. Write down your observations. And then it says, heat the resulting solution to boiling. And it says, caution, splattering could occur. You only want to add a couple drops of water because if you add a bunch, you're going to have to boil it all away. It's just going to take longer and there's more chance of it getting all over the place. So now that we have put some water in there, just a couple drops, we're going to very carefully put it back on the hot plate, let it heat up. There's two lab stations. You can have two of these at the same time. That's fine. And then um, let it boil to dryness again. Note any color changes and just write down all the colors that you see as you reheat it. All right. And that's it for mini lab one. Now we're going to go over the procedure for the hydrated crystals lab. Um, this one says prepare a data table as directed. You can just use the data table that's on the other side for writing down everything. So that's fine. Um, so it says also turn on the hot plate to high. We're going to, it should already be at 300 from the mini lab. So we'll set it to 300 and then that's fine. We'll get going with that. Um, number three, it says clean a porcelain evaporating dish with soap and water dry the dish by placing it on the hot plate for a few minutes. These um, are all clean from last year, so we're just gonna use them. So they're fine, we're gonna take them. You don't have to dry them on the hot plate, they're ready to go, all right? Um, so we're skipping number four. It says handle the, the dish with forceps for the remainder of the experiment, because we don't wanna um, touch this in case it's hot. And then also, uh, we'll have gloves on, but um, if we didn't have gloves, you wouldn't wanna get your fingerprints or any, any things on there. Okay. So now it says, measure the mass of the cool evaporating dish to the nearest 0 0.01. So let's zero this. That'll take a second. Let's use our tongs. Put it on here. And that's the first thing you're gonna write down on your data table on the other page. All right, the mass of the evaporating dish. Okay, number six said, it says caution, avoid breathing fumes. Add about three grams of magnesium sulfate crystals to the evaporating dish and measure the mass to the nearest 0 0.01. So whatever this says here, you're just gonna add about, like it says three grams, so mine's at 32, so let's add it to about 35. 
All right, so anywhere around three grams is great, okay? Then you're gonna write that down on the second page where it says a massive evaporating dish plus the hydrated magnesium sulfate. And then you're gonna subtract to get just the magnesium sulfate. Okay, next up, place the evaporating dish on a hot plate and cover with a 400 or 600 beaker, milliliter beaker, um, as shown in figure 8-1. Observe the inside of the beaker for a few minutes and record. All right, we're not gonna do that exactly as written. So we're gonna put this down. Your partner, they'll have theirs on there as well. We'll have one of these beakers. We'll cover up one of them. And as soon as you see condensation, you're done. Okay, that's all. We just wanna make sure that it is a hydrate. So as soon as you see a little condensation on there, you can just take it off, all right, real quick. The top of it will be cool. The bottom of it will be hot. Um, when you take it off, just take it off and move it to the desk as soon as possible in case it's a little warm, but it's only gonna be on there for a very short amount of time, so it shouldn't be hot at all, all right? Just carefully remove the beaker and continue heating for about 10 minutes. All right, we don't have time for that. We're gonna do eight minutes of heating, all right? So we're gonna change that a little bit also. We're gonna do eight minutes of heating. And then number nine says, remove the evaporating dish from the hot plate. Let it cool in a desiccator and measure the mass. Okay, so we can't take this off that it's hot and put it right onto the balance. So we need to put it into what's called a desiccator. This is a desiccator and there's oil along the inside here to keep basically all of the atmosphere inside of here dry. So the way that you take it off is you just kind of put it up against your apron and then you can pinch between the, the teal plastic and the clear plastic and that'll kind of separate it. If that doesn't work, you can try to like, you know, squeeze this, rotate it around, but you just want to pry it apart so that it opens up. Now you don't want to leave it open for too long because again, the air around us has moisture. So we want to quickly, but not dangerously take this now that it's been on here and it's very hot and put it into here. You might need two people to help you out. All right. And then the other persons, if theirs is ready also, they can put it in here too. All right. So we need it to stay in here and cool for a few minutes. And it's going to be in this environment where there's actual um, calcium chloride at the bottom, which acts as a desiccant, which basically absorbs any moisture that's in here. So we're not going to let these rehydrate. Um, we're gonna keep them dehydrated, which is our goal. Let it cool in the desiccator and then measure the mass. So let it cool in here for about three minutes or so, and then very carefully put it onto the balance, find its mass, write it down on the next page, and then you're actually gonna heat it up again. So you're gonna take it out of here, and this should be easier to open the second time, but just be careful. You don't want your experiment to get ruined because it gets shaken up. Take it out, put it on here, let it heat up again. All right, let's do five minutes this time. So we're gonna reheat it for a few minutes. Then you're gonna put it back in here. All right, after those few minutes, let it cool down again. After it cools down, you're gonna put it on the balance and it should weigh about the same. That means that it's completely dehydrated. We got all the water out of it, which is great. If it went down again significantly, you got to heat it up again and do it again. But we should be good with the doing heating it for eight minutes and then heating it for five minutes. It should be good. And then number 11, it says, after the final massing, return the magnesium sulfate crystals to a special container as designated by your teacher. So up front, I'll have a smaller beaker than this, but I'll have a beaker up front. And what you'll basically do is just kind of pour your used magnesium sulfate into that beaker. I'll collect it all and get rid of it. And you have some calculations, and it's very similar to what we've been doing in class with the hydrate calculations. So that's pretty much it. So read through this, read through the questions here, and then the conclusion. All right, you got this.